Chandler. All right, hello, hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, how are you guys doing? I'm fine. I'm looking for this, who is this person? He has, he has an uh, iPhone. What, whose name is that? iPhone, can you, can you identify who you are? Who has the name iPhone? Hi, Dr. OG. I don't know why my name is Primart, but it, this is Victoria. <laughs> I, I, I'm looking for your name. I didn't see your name, though. Is it iPhone? Yeah. Is no, it iPhone? No, I'm not iPhone. iPhone is someone else. Oh, yeah. oh Prime Art. Okay, that's you, right? Prime Art. Yeah. Yeah, Prime Art is Victoria Paley. P A S Y Y. All right, all right. So, um, good morning. How are you guys doing? Good. I think we are, uh, others will join us later. Um, yeah, we decided to raise do do this at home because it was it was raining too hard. I don't want to guys get in the, wet in the rain, so I um decided to do it. Remotely. Now, if you have a question, always ask me here. I don't respond to chat when I'm in classroom. Um, all right, let's begin. Today, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed your, your uh, spring break. And uh, we're back now for work. Now, this is uh, where we'll be focusing this week. We'll finish the normal distribution. We'll finish it this week so that you can now complete the homework. Uh, um, I mean, homework six. So I extended the due date uh, for homework six to 7th April. April 7th. So that as soon as we finish it, you can now um, complete it. The more people are coming in. Let me see if I can get them in. Thanks, Tyler. Never heard of that name before. Tyler, Tyler. Hmm. Strange. Oh, I think I spun. All right, let me add them in. So let's uh look at the um what we have. So uh, classwork nine and homework six, that's it for this week. Classwork nine and homework six. Let's begin. Um, I I mentioned in one of our classes, several class sessions, that I want you to print this procedural chart and also this by uh, this table of normal distribution. Um, this statistical table, not, not only normal distribution, the statistical table that we'll be using it from now until the end of the semester. So don't forget to print it. And we continue from where we stopped on that. So last week, no, sorry, the week before last week, I mean, we stopped at, uh, I showed you how to find the area under the standard normal curve, um, under the, um, yeah, standard normal curve. Today we start. We begin from standard normal distribution. 
uh, basically the application of normal distribution. Now, um, the standard normal distribution, when we say that, we mean a normal distribution that has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. That's what we call a standard normal distribution. Now, all the normally distributed variables, all of them can be transformed into the standard normal, normal distribution by using this formula. You can see on this formula on the screen, Z equals S minus mean of a standard deviation, where the S is, uh, is the data value, Z is the standard score, uh, mu is the mean, and data is the standard deviation. <clears throat> we have used this formula before when we are trying to get a standard score. If you remember, when we are doing measures of position. Now we can also use, also use it for calculating uh, normal distribution, normal probabilities. Now, um, let's see the application here. It says here that um, the monthly utility bills in a city are normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of um, 12. It says a utility bill is randomly selected find the probability that the bill is less than $70. B, find the probability that the bill, that the utility bill is between $90 and $120. C, find the probability that the bill is more than $140. So the first thing you do uh, for this kind of problem is to transform these variables, $70, $90, $120, $1, transform each of them, then solve. Yeah, okay, transform and then solve. So first of all, we know that the mean, um, the mean is 100, that was the same equation, and the standard deviation is 12. So let's solve part A. Part A says, find the, probability that the utility bill is less than $70. So that means our X equals $70. So now we're gonna transform it. Remember, I said you transform it using this formula here. So you use the formula here to transform $70. So let's do the transformation. Um, we have um, that mean is 100, 12, that is 12, that's standard division, and then X for A is um seventy dollars. So let's transform seventy dollars. So I'm gonna um put equal sign here. Uh, equal. Oh, let me, let's go. Here. Equal. So I'm gonna make this to be big so we can now make it eighteen probably. Eighteen, and we should be using a uh, time new Roman, not calibre. Okay. So you gotta be uh plug this in these numbers into this formula. We have me uh, S is seventy minus the mean of 100 divided by the standard deviation of 12. So I'm going to write this on paper so I can go and get the, the result of my calculator. So I got C equals 70 minus 100 divided by 12. So let's go and put it on the calculator. Um, 70 minus 100 minus 100 divided by 12. Negative, negative 2.5, as you can see from this, negative 2.5. So we have negative 2.5. Now, it is no longer 70. It is now negative 2.5. And it is no longer an X, it is now a Z. So we have transformed it, which means that the uh probably they're asking us, they're asking us for the for the probability that the utility bill is less than $70. It becomes the probability that the bill Z is less than $70, less than symbol. Let me see, can get it from here. 
let me see if I can get it from here. Less than symbol, I can get it. Yep, I got it. It's less than something now because less than negative 2.50. Okay. So remember this negative 2.50 is the answer we got after we put this in the calculator. 70 minus 100 divided by 12. So it's now transformed to a Z and it is no longer $70. It is now negative 2.5 equal. Now, um, to answer this, we make the chart. Remember, you make the chart. The negative sign is just to show you that it's on the uh, left side. That's all. So using this table that I, I showed you, that I showed you how to use in the class. If you, um, negative symbol is just to show you that it's on the left side. That's all. It's negative 2.50. Okay, now you can now um go to your table. You go to 2.5. You can see 2.5 here. You're going to be under zero. So you got 2.50, which is 0 0.49, 0 0.4938. Uh, but we can't use it now because, first of all, let's, we have to draw the chart first. So we draw the chart um, by putting our horizontal axis, then putting the bell curve. Okay. After that, we make some adjustments. I'm gonna make some adjustments here and move this back. So we have our center line and then our um so our center line here. I'm just gonna move the zero a little bit more so it will be at the center line. <laughs> okay, this zero doesn't want to move, so I'm gonna move this one. All right, um I'm sure you can all see this. So now we put the line for negative 2.5 which is this one here. Now, uh, we're looking for the probability that it is less than that. It's less than that will be on the left side. So we're gonna share the left side. Okay, we share it. Share the left side properly. So you can see that it is at the tail. So this is at the tail. If you remember, it's at the tail. Uh, this side means the tail. Once you finish shedding it, uh, this is the problem that we're looking for, left side. The uh, symbol is coming in. Bring the person in just a minute. Okay, so once you finish shedding it, you can now go to the table of, I mean, to the uh, procedure chart. Uh, once you go to the procedure chart, you can see from the procedure chart that um, this one here, you can see this one here looks like what I have on this drawing, see it's on the left tail. See? So when you look at the procedure chart, you see that it is on the left tail, this one here. And the instruction says, look up the Z value to get the area, subtract the area from 0.5, which means we're gonna do a 0 0.5000 minus. Now uh, we can now, um, get the result for negative 2.50 from the table. Okay. It's 2.50 from the table. Let's get it. Uh, it's 2.5, go to the table of normal distribution, and then we'll find it from there. Uh, negative 2.50. Remember, this is, remember this is, it is clearly written, table five, area of, of a standard amount distribution. So 
we have to say, say under zero. This is Z, uh, 2.5. Remember, negative side, sign is to show you that it is on the left side. So if you're using this table, you don't worry about the negative. Just know that it's on the left side. That's all. So we're looking for 2.5 here, um, which is here. Right? You can see right here, under zero. So it's going to be 0.4938. 0.4938. Uh, I hope you can see where I see. 0.4938. So we go to <clears throat> and write 0 0.4938. So 0 0.4938. So I'm gonna confirm it, reconfirm it again. 2.5 under 0. 0 0.4938. Good. So we just put it right there. Um, let me write this down on the calculator. I mean, write that, that on paper and put it on the calculator. 0 0.500 minus 0 0.4938. So that we can get the answer, the final answer for that question. So you have 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4938. Four nine three eight point zero zero six two zero point zero zero six two. So the probability that um the utility bill is less than seventy dollars is point zero zero six two. Now, if you have any question, you can ask me. Not by chatting room. Just ask me here. Any question on this? So excellent, no question, good. Now let's try part B. Part B says that find the probability that the utility bill is between $90 and $120. That means that we are going to transform 90 and also we are going to transform 120. So again, remember that the mean is still the same. Mean is $100 and the standard deviation is $12. So I'm gonna uh, copy this too because it's there. So just copy and then just change the, the, the um, letters here. So I got part B, it's part B, part B, okay. Now for part B, um, the solution, let me write put the type in the solution first. Solution, so we have the mean of, Two, sorry, mean of one twenty and standard deviation of twelve. Now, in this case, it says between ninety dollars and one twenty dollars. So there are two Z's here. First, this is Z one. This is Z two. So that we will have um, Z one is. I mean, uh, actually, not Z, not Z. There are two X's here. X one and X two. So S1 is 90. Let me write this down, then I'll put it on the paper. X1 is 90, and X2 is 120. So I'm going to write it down. We have X1 uh, equals 90, So which, which we will we'll be transforming in a minute. OK. Then X2, X2 is 120. I believe that what it says there. Yeah, 120. So we're gonna uh, be transforming that. That means we're gonna need two Z, C1 and Z2. So um, now let's find Z1. Uh, we'll be using the same, um, I'm gonna get the formula from, because this place will not allow me to get right the formula. So I'm gonna get it from the other books, um, workbook. Z1 will be, X1 minus mean over standard deviation. Okay, so I'm gonna get I get get the formula, put the formula from um the other workbook that we have here. So I'm gonna get it from there. So get equation. So I'm gonna uh, move this a little bit higher uh, or down. So we have uh 
Z1, okay, Z1, Z1 equal, oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'll do it again. So I have um Z1, Z1, to make it uh make it um increase the font size to 18. Okay, you can see it better now. Z1 equals um we got X1. X1 minus mean, we we'll have the mean here. Okay, divided by standard deviation. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it there in our, our main workbook. So I'm gonna take you to the main workbook now and paste it here. So you can get our Z1. So, which would be equal, uh, making it faster, you know. Make it um, 18, so we can see it properly. Now, so X1, you can see the X1 right here. Um, yep. X1 is uh, 90, so you have 90 minus, the mean, which is uh, uh, 100 divided by standard deviation, which is 12. So that gives us the Z1. So we got 90, 90 minus 100 divided by standard deviation of 12. So we have taking you to the calculator. We're gonna have um ninety minus hundred divided by standard deviation of twelve. Negative zero point eight three. Negative zero point eight three. So I write negative zero point eight three. So we repeat the same process for Z2 to get uh, using X2. So again, I'm gonna take you to that uh, formula, the other workbook. So change this to Z2, okay? Z2, that means X2, okay? X2. I can then copy this and take you back to our main workbook. That X2. So I will have it equal, uh, making it again, making it um 18, so it's more visible. Now, now our X2 is 120. So you got 120 minus uh mu is 100, that means 100 divided by standard deviation of 12, so I'm gonna write this down, got 120 minus 100 divided by 12. So 120 minus 100 divided by 12. So let's go to the calculator and get this out. Have 120 minus 100 divided by 12. Yep, that 1.67. 1.67. Okay. 120 minus 100 divided by 12. 1.67. Okay. So 1.67, I'm going to take you back. We got 1.67. So, which means that the probability that the utility bill is between 90 and 120 becomes the probability that uh, is between negative 0 0.83, uh, the way we write it, write it as less than 
at z less than we have seen it before when we when I introduce you to standard normal distribution. So that means between between um 90 and 120 become between negative 0 0.83 and 1.67 because after the transformation. So to answer this, we make our chart. So our chart here, negative 0 0.83, 0 0.83, then zero, then 1.67, then you can now introduce your horizontal axis, okay? And then the, um, the bell curve itself. Okay. And make some adjustments, okay? All right, adjust this one too. I'm gonna adjust this one. Okay, probably close up. Then this one with a little bit, you know. Oh. Now, put the center line presenting the mean right here. And it said uh, between these two values. So I'm gonna put the line for negative 0 0.83 and the line for 1.67, okay, because this one's a little bit further down. So the line will be um, a little further down to show clearly. Okay, now I say between them, say between these two values. I'm looking for the probability that they fall between these two values. That's what it means. So we're gonna share the two values, share the the the, the um the space between them. I share this. Okay. All of them share all of them. Okay. Almost done. All right, last one. Okay, so between them. Now, after this sharing, you can now go to your um, procedure table to see what we are required to do. So if you look at it, you can see that this one is the one that looks exactly like what I have in my workbook. See, to, to this, these places are shaded. And look at this one here, you can see that uh, between two Z values, we are shaded, see? And it says for that, say, look at the Z value to get the, the areas and the areas. So we're going to get the area and uh, for this, uh, negative 0 0.83, let me write them down. Um, negative 0 0.83, and then 1.67, Let's find the area on the table of normal distribution. So we have them here. We have the table of normal distribution right here. I can see this. Now remember, I mentioned in the class, this is what table of normal distribution, there are two, three different types. If you're using the one that is in the homework, make sure you follow the rules there. I, I recommend this one because this is the one we're using in the class. And that we're, in that case, we're, we're going to be following the rules on the posterior chart. So let's see. Um, Z um, I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, when I'm using the one in the homework and I'm trying to use this one, it's like wrong 50% of the time. So can I use this one always for the class? I like tests. Like I said, this one is, uh, if you know how to use that one in the, in the homework, fine. Uh, you have the it's that one is cumulative. You have a different rules, so if you know how to use it, fine. Uh, but uh, I say you, I recommend this one because this so that you don't get confused because you're gonna get the same results if you use them properly. 
So you can use this one for the homework, you can use it for the test. If you follow the rules, the way I'm explaining it in class, uh, the, way I, the way I explained it in class and the way I'm explaining it now. Now, so either way you can use it, but don't use the particular rule I'm using for this one, for the one that is in homework. It might get you a wrong answer some, sometimes. So whichever one you're using, be consistent with that. Okay? Now we have uh, 0.83, negative 0.83. So like I said, this if you're using this table, you don't have to worry about the negative. So you just look at 0.8 under 3. 0.8, you go under 3. You can see right 0.8. You can see the 3 right there. So it gave me 0 0.2967. So have next one is 1.67. Yeah, next one we're looking for is one point for 1.67. So we have 1.67 goes to 1.6, but you have to go under seven. You can see under seven. Oh, I have under six. Here, here. 1.6. I see the same right there. So 1.67. I have uh 0 0.4525. 0 0.4525. We can write both of them on our workbook. Um so for 0 0.83, we got 0 0.2967 plus for this one, 1 1.67, we have 0 0.4525. Adding them together will give you the answer we are looking for. So let's add these two together. We go to our calculator. Um, 0 0.2967 plus 0 um, 0.4525, 0.7492, 0.7492, write it down, 0 0.7492, okay, I'll go to our workbook, 0 0.7492 so that the probability that the utility bill will be between $90 and $120 is 0 0.7492. Uh, any question on this? Any question? Yeah, good, excellent there. Now, when you have the chance, just try this one as a practice, as a practice. Let's go to how to do find the X value. I mean, finding the data value when we are given specific probabilities. So how to find the data value X when we are given the uh, specific probabilities. So to find that, we use the formula. You can see the formula on the screen. This is just one of the formulas. There's another one, well, there are two of them, but this one is easier. <clears throat> so we're using that. X equals Z times standard deviation plus the mean. We are X to present the data value we are looking for. And data standard deviation, then mu is mean. Uh, let us apply it here. So apply it on this equation. It says to qualify a uh, solution, the solution to qualify for a police academy, candidates must score in the top 10% on a general ability test. The test has a mean of 200 and a standard deviation of 20. Find the lowest possible score to qualify. Assume that the test are normally distributed. <clears throat> now, this is what you are giving. They give you the they gave you the probability already as 10%. So what you're looking at now is X. So I'm gonna let me get 
Let me get these symbols. That will, that will help us make it easier for us. We get the symbols. So in this case, it said that the mean, uh, yeah, hold it. The mean, um, can I erase this? The mean is uh, 200. And the standard deviation is, you can see right here, 20. So we're looking for X. X. We don't know what it is. Um, include it here. X. We don't know. Right? To find X, we first of all need to find Z. Now, um, so let's say Z, uh, Z. Oh, to find Z, we need to do one more, one, 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 one thing that is important. We, let's just draw the chart first to show you what they are saying here. Now, it says here that candidate must score on the top 10%. That means their score must, far, must fall in the 90th percentile. Top 10%. Let me show you how it looks like. Um, okay, we have um, this here, zero center line. This is the X we are looking for here, which we don't know. So we need to find Z first. Let's find Z. Okay, I'm gonna make the drawing here. Who the horizontal axis. Okay. Uh, then um who the vertical axis. Sorry, who the uh bell curve. Okay, make some adjustments. Now you're gonna score. Uh, remember the center line is gonna be here. Okay, and uh, the score must be in the top five percent. Top is it top ten percent? I mean to say top top ten percent. That means this is the, the line that demarcates. 90%, 90%, but we are talking about the top 10%, um, the top 10%. Okay, up into my internet, okay. Can you hear me? Hello guys, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, good. Now and see the, see this is mark uh from from here um to the top ten top ten percent from here up. I mean basically it's 98 percent So let me put the arrow there to show the top 10%. Top 10%. So this line here. Will present the top ten percent. This line, this line that is this from here. This is the cutoff where it, where, where the yeah, score need to be. That's a cutoff score. See right there. So I'm gonna shed it. Okay, shed. So from that cutoff point and above, you will qualify for the academy. Okay, if you score anything from that line and up and above, you qualify. He's said top 10%, which means that your score will be better than the score of 90% of the people that do that general ability test. Okay. Now, um, so that was Z here. They say that top 10%, that means remember when it is on, on the tail, you subtract from 0.5. So I'm gonna do 0.5. Minus 0.1, that will give us equals 0 0.4. You can verify this, 0 0.1, 0 0.10. Now that will give us our Z. Now we can get this, we're, we're gonna go to the table and look for this Z, 0 0.400. 0 
when we go to the table of normal distribution uh here point four zero zero we look for it we look for it uh point four zero we, we didn't i didn't find four point four zero i've only found a number that is this one is too far away this one is 15 points away but this one is closest three points away so if you do four zero 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 minus three nine nine seven see uh, if you if you ignore the decimal point and do four zero 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 minus and uh, what was what was that number again minus three nine nine seven minus three nine nine seven you will see that it's three points away from four zero 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 whereas uh this one here uh, this one, 4015 is 15 points away. So this is the closest. Now we follow it to the left. 1.2. And you follow it up. 8. See? If you follow it to the left, you're going to get 1.2 for Z. Then if you follow it up, 8. So 1.28. 1.28 is our Z. Uh, 1.28. 1.28. So with that, we can now answer the question. Remember, the question says, it says here to find the lowest possible score to qualify. This is X is the lowest possible score. So what is our X? To find that, we're going to use this formula here. X, Z times standard deviation minus the mean. See, I'm going to copy it. Z times standard deviation. That's how that will give us our X. See, which means that X equals our Z is 1.28. Okay, times standard deviation is 20. Plus the mean, the mean is 200. So I'm gonna write this down so we can get it from the calculator. We have X, equals 1.28 times 20 plus 200. So 1.28, um, go to our calculator. I mean, sorry, um, go to our calculator, yes. Our calculator, we have 1.28 times 20, plus 200, that give us 225.6, say 225.6. So the lowest score to qualify, to qualify is 225.6. That should be this score at the top 10%. Um, uh, any any question to this? Any question on this? If you have a question, please ask here. Don't chat, don't send the chat. I don't chat when I'm in the classroom. Yeah. Don't be chatting. Ask me here. I'm here. Uh where did you get 0.5 and 0.1 from? Okay. Point one is you see that you see that uh your candidate must call on the top 10%. That's point one. Now, therefore, point 0.5, if you see, if you look at our chart, is this thing four on the tail. So if you look at the procedural chart, the way I explained in the class, you say that if you fall in any of the tails, you look at the Z value to get the area and then subtract the area from point 0.5. That is where the point 0.5 come from. Okay. Yeah. And also, you know that for this uh, bear curve, half of it is 0. 0.5 and the other half is 0. 0.5 so this one is 0. 0.5 and you're looking for only the shaded part you so you gotta do 0. 0.5 minus the area any other question excellent now let's look at another example like that it says here um for a medical study uh candidates a researcher wishes to select people in the middle 60% of the population 
based on blood pressure. If the mean systolic blood pressure is 120 and the standard deviation is eight, find the upper and lower readings that will qualify people for the study. Uh, excuse me. So make sure you read the question carefully so you can understand what they are looking for here. So it said middle 60%. So um, you're gonna the solution, we're gonna have, like before we have our mean, let me just copy the, the symbols from here. So I guess mean and standard deviation are given. The mean is, 60%, sorry, you mean it's uh, mean blood pressure is 120, I'm gonna write 120, right? And the standard deviation is eight. So uh, they're looking for, it, it said that there is such a wishes to select people in the middle 60%. Now the middle sixty percent, uh, I will show that in a diagram, you know, uh, in a few minutes. You say find the reading. We need to. You say you say find the upper reading. Find the um upper. Okay, and the lower reading. Okay, to qualify. Now that means we're gonna have two x. We're gonna need x1 and x2. So uh, let me illustrate this with a chart, the diagram. x1, you're going to have 0. You have x2. So you're going to, um. so that means we're going to need two z's. We're going to need z1. Anyway, so let me uh, make some adjustments here. So I continue and adjustments. So S1 will represent the lower reading and S2 will represent the upper reading. So we can now um, put this together, put the lines. Okay, right here. Then put the barrel curve. Okay, all right. Do I get it right? It's bending again. Okay. Let's see. I think I get it wrong. Let me try it again. With the bear curve. <laughs> anyway, I think I think you get the point though. Now have then this one. So, so you said that you want the middle sixty percent. Um, for the middle sixty percent, that means I uh, have the X one. Of course, the center line will be here, and the one the X two. One X two. So middle sixty percent. That means like this this place would be one would be thirty percent. Okay, thirty percent here, thirty percent, and um, the other one would be also thirty percent, thirty percent, making it sixty percent. Okay, because this is is two halves. That's the middle. Um, okay, then I'm going to bring this one back. Okay, so I'm going to share it. So you can see what they mean by middle. Middle 60%. So 30, 30 on both halves, making it 60%. So, and I said you want to do this based on their blood pressures, yeah? Uh, so I'm gonna make this this thirty uh to be bold 
so that we, this will not obscure it. Okay, I got this last one. Maybe that. So you can see uh, the thirty percent. Okay, I'm gonna make it bold so it doesn't be won't be obscured by this. Okay. And here we have the same thirty percent. Good. Now, so we have it. So let's get our Z one. So we need to need the Z one. I'm gonna need Z two. Be able to answer this question. It says, uh, for this medical study, the researcher wishes to let people in the middle sixty percent of the population based on blood pressure. So if the mean systolic blood pressure is 120 and the standard deviation is 8, find the upper and lower readings that will qualify. Okay. So for our Z1, um, we will have uh, now 30% on both, uh, both sides. Okay, 30% on both sides. I mean, Z1 will be 0. Point Three zero zero zero. Now let's go to the table to find this on the table of normal distribution. Uh, three zero zero zero. I got a, got a table right here. Point three. I didn't see three. I see, I see two nine six seven, which is very far. Two nine nine five. Three zero two three is twenty three points away. But this one, 2995. Let's look at this. Let's assume that there's no decimal point. Okay, if, you, if we go to the calculator, 2995. So, um, 3000 minus 2995. This is only five points away. Then, the other one is, that is close, is also uh, this one here. 3023, and if we check it, 3023, 3023 minus 3000, which means that this is the closest right here, 2995. If you follow it to the left, 0.8, to the right, to, I mean up. 4.84. See, you flip to the left, 0.84. So 0.8 and 4. So you have 0 0.84, 0 0.84. Now, because it's for if for the x1, I mean, it's on the left side, you make it negative 0 0.85. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, uh, by symmetry, by symmetry, we will have, um, somebody's coming, I don't know who the person is. By symmetry, um, by symmetry, we have that uh, Z2 we also, which is 0 0.3000, which is by symmetries. But this time around, Z2 is for X2, and it's on the right side. So it will, is it to be positive 0 0.84? Just double check it again. I'll have yep, 2995.5. Point, uh, if you follow it to the left, 0. 0.84. So we are good. Eh? We are good. So 0. 0.84. So now, with that, we can now answer the question uh, using the formula here. This formula. Let's modify it, make this one Z, X1, Z1. So let's find. So now, now the. Um, the upper and lower uh, readings to, uh, that will qualify people to participate in this study. We have our mean as eight, standard deviation uh, sorry mean as one twenty, standard deviation as eight. So Z one, X one would now becomes a uh, lower reading, which is our X one. So X one will now become Z one. Z1 times um 
Now make, I'm going to make some adjustments. Z1 times. Okay. Times um, standard deviation, which is right here. I'm going to just copy from here. Standard deviation. Okay. Plus the mean. And the mean I can get it from just from here. <laughs> so uh z1 plus standard deviation from the mean, which means um and our z1 is negative 0 0.84. Yeah, times standard deviation of eight plus the mean is 120. I'll give you the lower reading. I'm gonna write this on the paper and then put it in. Uh, negative x one equals negative zero point eighty four times eight plus one twenty. CV. So you can now go and get it from the calculator. I have um negative. Negative zero point eight four times eight plus one twenty one thirteen point two eight one one three point two eight millimeter of mercury. Okay, count one one three. Point eight. Was it point two eight? Sorry, millimeter of mercury. That had the same millimeter of mercury. Oh, no need, no need, no need writing it. Now for the um x two, we do use the same formula. Uh, upper reading. But we just use the same thing. Just um, uh, this time around, it's gonna be negative and um, positive. So the upper reading, this time around, we upper reading. Upper reading, and this is going to be turned to x2. I mean, it's going to be z2. So you're going to be remove, we're going to remove the negative sign that change our answer. And then we go to the calculator to get it. On the calculator, we go and get, remove, change the answer to a negative, from negative to positive, change, remove this negative sign. You're going to be 126.72. 126.72. One twenty six point seven two millimeter of mercury, and that's it. So the lower reading would be this one thirteen point two eight millimeter mercury, and upper reading will be one twenty six point seven two millimeter mercury. So that means that's that will be the lower and upper readings that will qualify people to participate in that study. Uh, any question on this? Any question you have asked? Okay. Excellent. Now let's look do the last one we'll be doing this morning before we finish for today. Say it's suppose that the at SAT scores are normally distributed with a mean of 9950 and the standard deviation of 200. Compute the 95th percentile score. Compute the 96 percentile score. Let's do it. Solution. Um, the 95th percentile score is a score such that uh 95% of the data values uh will fall below it. Uh is the score. The score such that the score x, well, the score x such that, oh, sorry, my mistake. Um, is the score x so that 95% of all all that of all data values. 
Mm-hmm. All these calls. Calls. Below it. Okay. Now that's what it means. So now you can illustrate this uh, with the diagram. Uh, remember our mean. Let's get our mean symbol for this variable. Our mean. Do I give? They give us the mean. Yeah. And the standard deviation. Okay. They say that the mean is nine fifty. 950 and the standard deviation is 200. Now we're looking for the 95 percentile score. So is the score so that 95 percent fall below it? So we can we can illustrate this in a chart. Okay, we have a zero. This is the score we're talking about here. It's gonna be here and 50 percentile score. So I'm going to insert the diagram. So we're talking about top 5% here. Since 95% of better values will fall up below it. Okay. Now we have, uh, make some adjustment. Okay. Okay, well, move a little bit. Now I'm gonna put the center line. Okay, move it a little bit. Yep, I move this. Then move this a little bit. So this is score we are looking for. We don't know what the score is. Okay. Then I'm gonna put the um line say so that cut the cut off all the score below it are 95 percent are below it okay now we have um this top five percent score here okay top five percent well, that's the nine five percent 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 type of five percent because they say that five percent uh percent that I mean um 95 percent of the scores are below it by five percent are above it yeah so let's get that Z Z equals um course it's gonna be uh Five percent, right? We say by five percent. That's going to be when well, um the top five percent um diagrammatically will be from here. So is it is it falls on the tail on the tail side? So I'm gonna share the tail side on the right side of here. One more. See. So it's as a tell. I mean, it's gonna be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 percent is 0 0.05. So uh 0 0.5 minus 0 0.05. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.05. So let's look at it on here on the calculator. 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Minus 0 0.05, 0 0.45, 0 0.45, 0 0.4500. Now, we can now look at this on the table of uh, normal distribution, 0.45, so look at here, uh, 0.4, on 0.45 inside the table this time, I see 0 0.4495, which is five points away. If you can calculate it, check it with the calculator. Um, then I also saw 0 0.4505, which is also five points away. Now, when you find two numbers that are 
that are equally this uh close. This one is from five points away. This one is also five points away to I mean five points away from uh point four five zero zero. Because if you ignore the decimal points, for example, if you have uh four five zero zero minus if you go there we have four four nine five okay well four four nine five see that is five points away and if you repeat the same thing with this one here four five zero five Okay, four five zero five. Four five zero five minus four five zero zero. See that it is also five points away. They are, they are equally close. If you have a situation like that, take the bigger one, which is this one here. Okay, follow it to the left. One point six five. 1.65. So you're gonna be 1.65 as this should be 1.65. Okay. Now since we have everything we need, we can now calculate the uh 95th percentile score. So the uh 95th uh percentile score x. That's called, uh, which is X, X equals Z times standard deviation of 200, let me put standard deviation with the symbol first, plus the mean, with the symbol of the mean, Okay, which is, I mean, that the X equals, as uh, Z is 1.65. Okay, times standard division of 200 plus uh, mean of 950. And that will give us the, the 95 percentile score. So I'm writing this down. I got X equals 1.65 times 200 plus 950. So you got um 1.65 times 200 plus 950. Give me 1,280. Yeah. 1,280. 1,280. Now, any question on that? Um, sir, um, what if it says uh, 65 percentile? Would it be like... Would that mean it would be 35 percent to defend for? And then, that mean... Would be yeah. taken away, be yeah, taken away be. zero point five from no, um, yeah, be. zero point three five from zero something that way. Yeah, if it is sixty five percent, that means uh, uh, percentile, that means you're gonna have a thirty five percent top, right? Okay. So you got point five minus because it, it is still on the, it is still even though it's, it's gonna be somewhere here, it's still at the tail. Because you're gonna be you mean, you're gonna you're going to be top. At five percent, that uh, sorry, top at five percent, uh, top top at five percent, yeah. And then you do point five minus point three five zero zero, then get the answer, then find it from the table. Now, if you say the uh bottom uh five percent, that means you're gonna be on the left side, see. So, uh, in that case. When you get your Z, you have to make it a negative 
أنسى. Okay. Um, and that's it. So once you make it easy, negative answer, then you plug it in here, and that will give you the bottom top uh bottom uh five percent. Now, any other question? Okay. If you don't have any other question, that means you are done for today. I'm gonna put the class work as soon as I end the class. Okay. Make sure you sh save it, Professor. Huh? Make sure you save it, please. To save this, this the, the notes here. Exactly. Yes, sir. Thank you. But the, um, you have the video. Okay, I'll I'll save that. No problem. I'll save the video and the 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 um the what we call. Let me save it now. Um, I have a I have a thing to talk about with you. Uh, when I go on the um say the past things that you save like this, when I go on the past ones like uh say binumeral or the first one, the first topic in this probability, I can't find like the examples on there for some reason. Like it does not like the examples of what we did in class, like how you put it right now, I don't see it there for some reason. On any of them. You mean the um handout? No, like the classwork at right now. Right now, there's no classwork. Now I'm gonna put it after the classroom. No, I mean like the work we're doing, like the examples we're doing in class for each class. Although I don't see them on the, on the notes, like like it would show the formulas only and the solution, but not the, like the workout. It it, 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 it are you talking about if you go to it on in Alex? No, on the on the word documents. I'm trying to figure out what you mean. Like, like when you save the word documents, uh, and you normally save them with the classwork in it, but I oh, don't see it for some reason. It's not, not in every class that I that is that is saved. If 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 it's only if the request for like now somebody requested for it, then I'll save it and upload it. Okay, okay. Hmm. Not in every class, like now. Someone requested this that I should put this for them. Then I'll that, that, not in every class that I save. Some of them is there, but not in all of them. It's only when they request for it, like in this this case. So I'm gonna put it there, and I'm gonna put the video too, so you can either do either way. So, any other question before we end? All right. So no question. Good. Excellent. So I'm gonna so I will see you guys on Wednesday then. And I'll I'll put a classwork in a few minutes so we can start working on this. Hey, greetings, Professor. Um, I think the probability that it'll rain on Wednesday is like a hundred percent or something. So in that case, should we anticipate another Zoom class or should we anticipate coming in? I won't say anything now because uh, sometimes they might be wrong. Sometimes they say that it's rain, but uh, it, it, it's, not, it's not every time it's to rain that will be out of class. You know that today, when I was today in the morning, it was really heavy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, anything here really. it's also really heavy as well. Where I live down in Parkville, it's pouring and it would it's just not stopping, and there's a lot of thunder as well. Yeah, that's why I decided to cancel it because it was really heavy, heavy, very, very heavy. But on Wednesday, if it, if it's not if it's the regular rain that doesn't really bother anybody. You can still be there, and okay. sometimes, and sometimes you know, sometimes this weather, this uh, weather forecast, sometimes the weather will change, might change. If it's just, you know, you know what I mean. There's this rain that drizzling that doesn't bother anybody. We can still be, we will still be in the class. It's when they have so much this thunderstorm and the possibility of uh, flooding. That's it, not about to do, you know. Uh, it, but so yeah, definitely acknowledge, professor. You know we are in a statistics class with you, and the probability is very high. So, so just it, it, play very funny. In the real ha -ha. World. <laughs> the probability, uh, probability, uh, it, it changes now. The, the the value for weather, the probability keeps changing. It might be high this morning, towards the end of the day, it might it is it lowers. You know. So yeah, it, I got you. <laughs> uh, it's not a, it's not a static it's not a static number. I got you. I got you. One that, the one that the one that is static is Mega Million. It's very low. Yeah. 
I got you. Uh -huh. But the one, one that you keep um, as as based on what they see, they can change the like, okay, let me give you an example. Insurance. Bye, Dr. Joseph. <laughs> Have a nice day. I know you want I know you don't like I know you don't like school. <laughs> no, because I too I, I I'm at home and my next class starts at eleven and the professor says we have to come in class so I have to drive to school. Oh, okay, okay. Be careful out there, huh? Thank you. See you Wednesday. Wednesday, sure, sure. So if you look at the um um like something like insurance, uh huh. Now, so when they put your name and your driving record, you get it gives them a probability. If you're gonna be a risky driver, right? So now that can change if you after some time if your driving record improve, the probability will change. Or if you be, if, if, if you live in a certain zip code, you put a zip code, you give them the probability of your car getting robbed, you know, stolen. That will give you a probability. But if you move away from that zip code, your insurance will also change because the probability will change. So it's in some in some cases it is a static number, but in some, in most of them, it is not static. So you keep changing. Acknowledge. Huh? huh? You say? No, I, I said acknowledge. I just think it's, oh, okay, it's okay. not like 32%, it's like 90%. <laughs> so 95, yeah. Well, yeah, we'll see. And I, I Yeah, I we'll see. Tomorrow. By tomorrow. Mm. Yes, sir. All right. Have a productive morning. Take care, everyone. Be well. I'll see you guys on Wednesday, hopefully. Good one. All right. Have a good one.